I am Brooklyn's finest, the New York Giant God's favorite DJ, Clark Kent. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from the hood of Crown Heights, and uh, it was uh, rough, but it still felt like you were part of a family on the block. I think the early stages of my life, because of what I was allowed to do when I was young, and what I wasn't um, discouraged from doing when I was young is the actual reason why you actually want to have a conversation with me. I became a DJ when I was nine. I started playing parties when I was 11. I played block parties when I was 12. And I figured out how to make money DJing when I was 15. So by the time I was 20, it was a business to me and I was taking care of myself. Back in those days when you're a Caribbean, most of the times your family's like, you're gonna be a doctor, you're gonna be a lawyer, you're gonna be this or that, you know what I mean? And when I told my grandmother I wanted to play records for the rest of my life, she didn't discourage me. So and I just wanted to be as good as I could possibly be doing what I did. And then someone took notice and said, well, the things you're playing show that you can tell what's gonna be the next record in the next two months. So a record company came and hired me to do a and which is artists and repertoire, where you find the artists, you make their records, you make their albums, you create the next artist that you're gonna hear. And being smart and successful in that kept me moving forward and up and up and up in positions until I've been a, a vice president at least five different record companies because I can tell you what's gonna be the next great talent. It's because I actually love music more than playing it, more than making it, more than anything. I love music. I was given the ability to play at one o'clock in a club that Red Alert had, and he was the main DJ, and that was Union Square. When he gave up a one o'clock spot to this kid who wasn't old enough to be in the club, that that was everything. So, like, if Red Alert didn't give me that spot, like, I, I I really don't know how I would have maneuvered myself into being able to be a a prime time DJ. He just gave me the spot and was like, go for it every week. So I went for it every week. I wasn't getting paid. I just was there doing it. Even though I knew what being paid to DJ was, nah, forget that. I get to play at one o'clock in the best club in New York City with Red Alert, who's the best hip hop club DJ around. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that every week. So I, I owe a lot to Red Alert. I think the, the, the two artists that I work with, I mean, everybody knows I from the beginning of Jay-Z's career. The reason I had such a affinity for Jay-Z is because of how prolific he was lyrically. And to me, I come from the age of rap being a contact sport. So because of that contact sport, he was lyrically the best guy around and I wanted to make sure that he made records. Working with Big was, was something else as well because just as good lyrically, but he had something else that turned the corner. He was like a star when he walked in the room. He didn't have to make the record for it to be right. When he made the record, it was just right. So those two. I never looked up to heroes. I looked at heroes. And the reason why is because I learned real young that everybody's human, like everybody. Even though you might look at them in a totally different light, they're just people and they have the ability to disappoint you. So when you look up to somebody, if they disappoint you, it's not like you're going, oh, he's human, he disappointed me. You're looking at them and then it's destroyed. This bubble you put them in has been burst. You know what I'm saying? So I look at the people in a different way. The heroes that I look at and the guys that I call heroes or the people I call heroes, I look at them with a, an immense respect. Now I respect everybody, but I can respect these people in a totally different way. Like, I looked at the messages that Malcolm X gave us, the messages that Martin Luther King gave us, and I look at the messages that my grandmother taught me, and I use those things to, to make those people special to me. So I don't look up to people, I've always looked at people. So I won't be disappointed, because everybody's human. When it comes to music, don't DJ because you love DJing. Don't be a producer because you love producing. Do these things because you love the music. Because it's as simple as looking at the music business. Everybody can go, I wanna get in the, I wanna get in the music business, I wanna get in the music business. 
the business you want to get in is based off of the music. So it's always music first. If it's the music first, make that the most important thing in what you're trying to do. Listen to everything. Care about what you're hearing. Even if you think it's not good, try to figure out the reasons that it was made. If you hear a record that's a hit and you hate it, try to figure out why it's a hit so that you know why and you can appreciate it for it being a hit. That way you won't walk around going, oh, I don't like these rappers nowadays. They don't, they don't, they don't rhyme this way or they don't rhyme that way. If you're looking at the music and taking the music first and making it matter the most, then you'll be able to understand why these records work and appreciate them differently. You don't have to walk away saying that's one of my favorite records, but if you can understand why people like it, that's the most important thing. It's about the music.